Now, one of the downsides of tying flies all the time and not getting to go fishing as often as I'd like is I end up tying a lot of flies that I've never fished before. Well, maybe that's not a downside because I am learning a lot of new patterns. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Savage Flies. I'm Matt. Thank you for stopping by. So the pattern I tied today for the first time, it's called the American Coachman. Now, a bit of history on this. It was probably first mentioned in a July 1968 article by Jim Kilburn in Western Fishing Game magazine. Now, Kilburn called it his top fly for sea run cutthroat. Then I found the pattern in Art Lindgren's Fly Patterns of British Columbia. And in here, Lindgren mentions that when he was researching it, he got in touch with Kilburn and asked him where he found the fly. So Kilburn tells him that he found it in a fly shop in Courtney in the 1950s. Now, Courtney is just a small city in British Columbia on the east coast of Vancouver Island. Now, funny thing about the story, the fly in the shop was called the California Coachman. Now, Kilburn knew that wasn't correct because there was already an established pattern called the California Coachman, which was a dry fly created in San Francisco in the early 1900s. And it was basically a royal coachman, but without the red band, it had a yellow band. So Kilburn knew this wasn't a California Coachman, so he just gave it a new name, called it the American Coachman. So while Kilburn did not create the fly, he did give it the name and probably did a lot for, you know, keeping the pattern alive. So I wouldn't say this is an entirely forgotten fly. You can find a couple of references to it out there, and it's probably in a few books, but it may not be one that you see every day. So having never fished this fly, how do I think I will fish it? Well, there's not a lot of sea run cutthroat or steelhead here in Maryland. I'd probably just fish it as a small streamer, maybe a big wet fly. But it's a really cool looking pattern, and it was fun to tie, so I hope you'll give it a shot. So there's one in the vise, the American Coachman. Now, common sizes for this, if you're tying it as a steelhead fly, pretty big. I'd go to a four or six. And if you're gonna tie it, you know, midland, inland trout sizes, sure, take it down to a eight, 10 even. This is an eight, two um, X long curved shank hook. And I'm gonna use black thread. This is a 70 denier. I'll put a base down to where the barb would have been. That looks good right there. Now for the tail on this, it calls for red duck or goose, just a small little slip. And a single slip, we're gonna make it pretty long and pretty thin. So that right there, we could even go thinner than that, but I kinda like that, so really long, see that? And let's try to catch it in right on top. A little pinch wrap, almost like you're tying a, a winged wet fly couple of wraps and see. Okay, I think that's going to look fine. I need to take a couple farther back right there. Okay, and I don't want to push it down, so let's just try to keep it up a little bit. And yeah, that'll be fine. So either snip or bury these uh, butt ends right here. I'm just going to go ahead and bury them. The next component we want to do is our rib. Remember, tie the components in the opposite order that you're going to use them. So this is a medium mylar tinsel. It's a gold on one side and silver on the other. Catch it in with the, the silver side toward the hook because that's what we want to see when we flip it over and wrap it. So open wraps going back, just trying to minimize a little bit of my thread buildup. That should be okay right there. What I want to avoid is it being thicker back here and then my body getting thinner as I go forward. So for the body, it's a yellow wool, and I'm gonna use a, a yarn. So this is just bright yellow wool yarn, and this is a four strand, but it's a pretty big, big fly. So I'm going to um, just wrap it as is. I'm not going to split up these strands. I'm gonna just try to catch it in pretty close to the back right here, and then bind this in as I've got, with that little nub right there, the back, it might end up getting thicker on me than the front. And I don't necessarily want, I mean, I don't want that. I can live with it, but um, it's not gonna make it look that awesome. So just take this, and what you can do, you can kind of spin this. It almost will act like a thread. If you spin it one way, 
it will tighten up into a cord and if you spin it one way it'll sort of flatten out so if you want to try that just try to lay it a little bit flatter for these first wraps back here and then maybe let it cord up as you get midway up and then you can possibly keep the body about the same thickness going all the way up but just take it all the way up to the front not far behind the eye we don't have a whole lot going on up front so you can almost take it all the way up okay when you get your body on up front let's catch this off with a couple of wraps and then snip this excess wool yarn and that body there it's not perfect but it's okay it's only slightly thicker back here but I think we can live with that so a couple extra wraps to really lock this in and don't be afraid to come back a little bit because you know we're gonna tie the wing on a little farther back than the head so depending on where you caught your tinsel in you might take a, a full wrap all the way around the back mine's kind of coming out on my side so I'm not really gonna be able to do that I'm gonna put my first wrap just right on the top and the picture in this British Columbia book had these pretty far apart they used some wide tinsel and didn't put them very close together. I think they only had like three or four wraps on a, a size six. So I think we're probably gonna get more than that. I, I think five is gonna look fine right there. And they're fairly evenly spaced. Don't worry about the front wrap because that's gonna be covered with our wing and hackle in just a second. So two wraps to get that secured. Now snip that excess and spend a couple extra wraps here if you need to. I don't necessarily need to. Keep my thread back far enough um, so I won't crowd the eye after I tie the next two components. So this next component is where we have to come up with a substitution. Unless you have polar bear fur. If you got white polar bear fur, go for it. You're lucky. But what do you want to substitute it with? Well, we've got two choices. A calf tail white calf tail or white buck tail, but they will give it two different properties. The calf tail is gonna be a little crinkly and uh, cause a little bit more disturbance through the water, and it might make it look a little bit too much like a trude fly or even a wolf. So I'm gonna use this buck tail right here. And what I've been doing with these, I don't put them in my stacker. Um, it doesn't always work that well, but see these ends, I've got some really long ones. What I'm gonna do is just pull out the, the real longest ones by my, hand, by my fingers, just a few at a time. And now, so I've gotten a lot of the long ones out, I'm just gonna grab it kind of by the end and then just pull some of the, the shorter fibers out. So I've thinned this down by at least half. And now it's a pretty sparse wing. That's about what I want right there. So I'm gonna catch this in just right there. You know, a couple of those are long, but I think we're, do, we're in good shape. So let's do a pinch wrap right here, and then a couple more and check it. Make sure it doesn't spin around on you. That's coming off the top fine. I'm happy enough with that. So another locking wrap. Now let's snip this off. Okay, I like that wing. It's not too full. It's, it's pretty sparse. And um, I think it's gonna work well. So the next component, is brown hackle and you really have some options here if you have a, a rooster just uh, try to get some of the softer uh, fibers a feather with softer fibers or use a hen if you're using a hen you know try to get some of the stiffer ones so try to find some combination in between this is a hen and but it's not a you know like a true soft hackle it's a little bit stiff I'm gonna catch it in from the thick side with the concave side toward the hook. Uh, I'll show you why in a second. It will just make this first wrap go down a little bit more smooth. See that? If you can tell, the concave side is toward the hook. I've got it caught in probably three wraps right there. Let's go ahead and do, I don't know, four or five. And do I want to clean this up a little bit before I wrap it? Eh, not really. I'm probably going to crowd the eye with what I got right there and I might have nicked my thread. You see the little bit of a, a fiber coming off, so I'm gonna have to spend just a couple of wraps to try to get my thread through that 
nicked point. And I sure did, because you can see the, the black fibers. If you're watching this on a big screen, you can see a little bit of my thread coming off. But we're fine. We are just fine. I'm gonna have to use my hackle pliers on this because I've barely got two inches of a feather here. And I'm gonna kind of wrap it, well, just like you would any collar hackle, even a soft hackle. I think I'm gonna get three wraps, we'll see. That's one full one right there. Let's do two. Yeah, we can get three. And we don't want them coming out perpendicular to the, the hook. We want them swept back. And particularly if you're using a rooster feather right here, um, you'll want to, you know, get them swept back. Get the, the wet fly look. It's not a dry fly and we don't want them coming off perpendicular at all. So let's snip that excess. And you see right now they're still kind of coming off perpendicular, but we can fix that. So just push these back and then we'll build our head. And this is probably where I would be better off if I used a, a 140 denier thread or a six aught instead of an eight aught. Wouldn't take as many wraps to get a nice head, but 70 denier is kind of my go-to and I usually just stick with it. Okay, so we've got that back far enough. That head is not too big and those fibers are swept back. So I think we're in good shape here. Let's do our whip finish. And then we'll see if we need to do any cleanup. Mm, I think we're fine. We've got a couple of stray fibers, but pretty much we're good to go with this one. A drop of head cement or varnish on the head there. And I'm gonna put it in my box. So that's it, everybody. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.